Well, speaking of your incredible label, I, I, I would love for you to introduce the special guest that uh, has just popped into the room. And if uh, the TY It would be my pleasure to introduce the special guest who just popped into the room. So a uh, couple of years ago, um, I saw an announcement that a video had just gone online by uh, the person who was going to represent Israel in the Eurovision Song Contest. And I immediately went and watched that video. And I said, oh, this is so great. I want to sign this person. And so I reached out to, uh, to her management and I said, I want to sign Netta. <laughs> and I think they were pretty surprised. This was before Eurovision had happened. She was just Israel's entry in Eurovision. And I, and I said to everybody, I'm going to sign an artist and I'm sure she's going to win Eurovision. And I said this like to everybody in the music industry, I said, you know, she's going to win. And they said, how do you know? I said, I said, Prom I promise you, she's going to win. And she won. <laughs> and that, of course, enabled uh, Eurovision to be held in Tel Aviv the next year, which was so exciting because I got to attend that. And she performed again at the next year. So actually, without any further ado, here is the great Eurovision winner, Israeli legendary artist and S-curve recording artist, Netta Barzilai. Hello. Good evening uh, to everybody. Well, and for me, well, Tiffany. Movie star as well in the Eurovision movie. I, Netta, I told the story when I started. My daughter, seven years old, saw you appear in the Eurovision, and it opened her mind and had her realize that a Jewish person can win Eurovision. And it was so <laughs> inspiring to her. So, you know, the, even that movie is continuing to continue your legend and your, and, and your inspiration of people. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for this introduction, Steve. Um, I'm very humbled. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, um, I, I didn't mean to inspire anyone. Just, you know, I, I thought about um, how am I the best version of myself? How am I staying true to myself? How, how am I bringing something fresh? How am I breaking the stigma? Um, and when you when you do what you really want to do, you, you accidentally inspire other people. And uh, when you stop thinking about what's, who, what it, whatever people are thinking, then, then you do something original and you do something that you're proud of and you can never blame anybody else for, for a failure or for a success, <laughs> um, which, is, which is pretty cool. Oh, well, Netta, it's so great having you here. My name is Shai Corman. I'm like the guest moderator for the day. Shalom, Shai. Uh, sh shalom, shalom. Uh, I'd love to do it in Ivrit, but I don't know if everybody else is. Um, but Steve, of course, interrupt me at any time. Uh, folks, if you would like to ask Netta a question, now is the time to use the raise your hand function uh, um, because I believe, Netta, it's o you're going to be okay answering some questions from the audience. Oh, my God. I would, I would be honored, and I would like that very much. Right, <laughs> this well, quarantine that... is very boring. <laughs> and I would love questions. <laughs> well, I'll start with the first one, and that is you represent, you know, you, you said you, you, you go within yourself to make that art, right? That art is what you want to do. But at the same time, when you, when you win the Eurovision, you're representing your country, you're representing all Jewish people, and you're representing that authentic self. How does it feel having all of those things in one, uh, on one person's shoulders? <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, reminiscing. It's like Eurovision was, was, was a long time ago. <laughs> uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm starting my musical path, like doing my own stuff. Uh, and I, and I realized that um, you can't beat like, like doing music for like, people are asking me, who are you? So, so who are, who is your audience? Who are you aiming for? Uh, we are with tr we, we try to make music with a lot of people and I uh, and I understood something uh, you can't try to be American you can try to be English you can try to be anything that you're not I am Israeli I am Jewish I am uh, beautiful and uh, and I can't beat anyone at their own game it needs to be mine and uh and i am very very proud of who i am and where i come from and in all of my pieces of music there is my personality you can see a lot of shades of it 
um, and uh, in when we did toy, uh, it was the whole crew. It was Israeli. The writers, the dancers, the the every everybody. Uh, we 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 had this unite uniteness <laughs> feeling uh, that we're doing something uh, bigger. And a lot of like the other teams had had like you know we, we need Swedish writers so we can have the best song we need uh, uh, we, we need swedish dancers we need like american uh, top liners so so it's like you have to be you you have like i i am very connected to the place that i come from uh and you can hear that a lot in my music like i i can't see myself living anywhere else oh my god i have a bug on me <laughs> it's one of the benefits of like living in a moshav <laughs> oh wow that's awesome uh, um so again i invite folks to ask questions i have a follow-up question in the meantime i think people are stunned Neta, to be honest <laughs> that, that that you appeared and thank you steve for bringing you so i have a follow-up question you know we've got young people here these are teenagers these are future jewish leaders they are living in a world that I did not grow up in, which is filled with social media and um, information from flying in different places and cyberbullying and, and all of that stuff. When you become a star, I imagine it's not just people loving on you. There's people that are also uh, throwing negative things. How do you as a human, as a person, handle that, um, uh, that as an empathetic person, handle that kind of thing? I think uh, bully, a bully. Um, I, I've been dealing with bullies. A bully is a bully is a bully. <laughs> I've been dealing with this since I was very young. Um, I, I grew up uh, until I was six. I grew up in Nigeria, uh, and uh, I grew up with six kids in a classroom, and uh, and they were all in different colors and spoke different languages and physical appearance wasn't a thing. So I was, I didn't discover that I am the, the, the fat unibrow kid with the accent <laughs> until I was like eight years old. Um, when I came to Israel to 40 uh, kids in a classroom that looked kind of the same. Um, and when kids label you, it kind of sticks uh, so I believed that I was who they said I was for a very long time, till I was 18, 19, when I started my growing process. And I realized that I am missing all the fun, <laughs> like when all the, the, all the fuss was over. And I realized that only what you believe you are that's who you are. So I get a lot of hate and it makes me laugh because I am who I am. I am Jewish and Israeli and, and fat and I am obviously all those things and I love them about me. Uh, if I get hate for for basically who I am, uh, and I get accused uh, for actions that people may or may not like that my country does, it has nothing to do with me. And I keep telling myself that. That's my mantra. I, don't, I won't lie, there, there are days when I feel bad. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but usually I am, not very offended because wow. it's basically it's not my problem it's their problem I, that's incredible advice whether someone is a massive star or again me talking to my own children so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep that with me uh we do have a question from natalie sabrusala um uh i hope i pronounced that correctly um uh or sabrusula uh, where did you get the inspiration for Toy? And I would say, uh, knowing you worked with a whole bunch of different people, how, how does Toy connect to you uh, personally? I'll add. Hmm. Uh, where did the inspiration for that? First of all, Toy was written for me by two wonderful men, 
uh, which are Doron Madali and Stav Beger. Uh, Doron Madali is the writer, a uh, co-writer, and he, uh, he's been dreaming to win Eurovision for the 40 years that he is alive. Seriously. He's a big fanatic <laughs> uh, of the competition. I knew nothing about it entering uh, uh, my reality show. I knew, and he already had the algorithm. <laughs> um, and uh, and he re- he's, he's written Golden Boy as well. Oh, wow. And he's been waiting uh, for someone who would give him, who would be bigger than life and a, 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 a big diva that, that will give him inspiration. And then uh, he, he, he's telling the story that he saw me um, doing Rude Boy in my reality show uh, called Akohava Ba. And then he stood up uh, in, his, in, in his house. Uh, he stood up from his sofa watching me and he said, this is the winner of Eurovision 2018. Stop everything. We found her. This is her. And, uh, and then he worked really, really hard uh, to write something that will fit my, me- my measures. Uh, like the hot topics that year uh, it was uh, was Trump. <laughs> um, it was uh, self uh, empowerment, and um, and it was body shaming. So he thought that all came to a really great. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Like it's it's karma. It's all miraculously came together. Like me and the song, and it all came to him. And um, and then I heard it um, after I won, and I thought it was complete shit. <laughs> I thought it was terrible, um, and I didn't want to sing it. Uh, and then we met in the studio, and he let me enter uh, some tweaks that I thought would be cool. Um, I personally saw myself as an artist that can't take herself too seriously. The whole song was very, very serious. It had no chicken clocking. It had no uh, uh, the, the Pikachus or stupid or it, it, it was really, you know, an empowerment serious song. Um, and I think that's a problem about you know feminism uh when we think feminism uh we think about women hating men and i think that whenever we come from hate when you come from hate you can never bring love you can that you can never bring light when you bring darkness and i I thought it should be similar to to gay to a gay pride parade. It should be a celebration of love. It should be a celebration of hey, I'm here. I bring love. You may like me or you may not, uh, but you can join the party if if you'd like to. And uh, and then came all the humorous stuff: the Pikachu, the stupid boy, and the chicken clock which I took from, you know, I took from like boys being, uh, uh, bullies being afraid yeah. of something. Bulliness comes out of fear. So a chicken was like on point. And I took it from my jazz schooling, which I may or not use, may or may not use in the future. That's that's an incredible story. We do have some questions. If you have a little bit more time, it would be sure. great. I think people are now out of the shock, and now they have so many questions. So, uh, Eliana Zitrin, uh, I would love for you to unmute yourself and uh, and uh, ask away to the incredible Netta. Hi. Before we do that, I just want—I know we're we're supposed to go to lunch at one. People who feel they need to go eat should go eat. Everybody else can stay. This is amazing. So, um, you know, eat later. Whoever wants to eat, it's okay. You can go eat. I will stay stay here. (laughs) Eliana, fire away. Um, 
how did like the coronavirus pandemic like affect like I mean obviously you wouldn't be able to do concerts and stuff but like what have you been doing not sure I'm hearing you quite life. well what? is your uh, uh, Neto it was a question about how coronavirus is, is affecting you as a musician okay so and uh, the ability to do concerts and, and keep it going that's an amazing question actually <laughs> um, obviously there's no concerts I have uh, my platform called Neta's Office, which I do perform for my own <laughs> comfortable house. Uh, uh, it's weird. Uh, it's on YouTube. Uh, and it's very, very fun. Uh, I do interactive stuff with my followers. And uh, I miss performing like I, I didn't appreciate performing before. Like it, it's, it seems like a, a distant memory uh, making music in front of people. Uh, and I miss it and I, uh, it, it pains me. Uh, and, uh, and I hope this will all be over, but we all have to reinvent ourselves <laughs> this, at this time. Uh, and I'm finding out that I am very good at cooking. I'm sorry I'm lying, I'm very bad. I just, I just like to say I'm good. <laughs> um, um, I, I, I won't lie to you, this is a very, very confusing situation and I'm still, you know, I'm still figuring out. Um, what I'm really scared of is that uh, people will stop pursuing music and art because uh, you can't really make a living anymore. And this is going to be the situation for, for about a year or two, <laughs> if, we're, if we're really not optimistic. And, uh, and, what, and with a world with no art, uh, it's, it's very sad. And it's a world that, it's not, that is not free, in my opinion. Good question. Yeah, and, and very much something I think everyone can relate to that. There's another question coming back to Toy. Uh, Isabel Khan asked what it was like making that mu the music video, which was like incredible. <laughs> well, nobody told me uh, uh, the concept of the music video and what dancers are going to be there and who's the director. I was like, imagine like uh, a bomb fell on your house. That was me winning the competition. And I wasn't expect, I didn't expect to win. I didn't expect to win like my pre-election, my reality show. And then like 10 days after that, there was the song. And 10 days after that, the video was out. So you didn't really have a chance to decide stuff and to be a part of a creation. So they brought me to a set filled with uh, colors. And I just did what I do in front of the mirror since I was a very little girl. Uh, since I was six or seven year old, I've been like posing in front of the mirror, like doing that shit. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and they were all in, in a big shock, like, Figuring out, figuring out how confident I was and how light I was and how, how much freedom I give to that six-year-old girl. Um, I am basically, I'm, I'm trying to give that girl a lot more freedom in the studio, when I write, when I compose music. She knows best <laughs> what's a hit. She knows best what works. Everything else is, is just fear. Uh, and that's it. And, and I think the audience can tell because I don't think personally as a, as a lover of music, I don't think that a song like toy or a video like toy captures people unless they know that you're shining through in that. So, uh, I, I feel that's amazing to know that the six year old girl is part of it. Uh, Nina Rutherford asks, how was your life affected after Eurovision? How was my life affected? Um, 
I call it like the, the pancake moment, like, the, <laughs> like that flipped. <laughs> um, uh, everything changed. Uh, it, it, you know, Israel is so small and we all think that we're the center of the world. <laughs> <laughs> we are but we are sure that uh, nothing else happens elsewhere and um and i discovered how big the world is and uh, like we we are sure nobody everybody's anti-semitic and nobody gives a shit about us and then uh and then something like this happened uh when when the world chooses to, to vote for israel uh, I discovered how much the world is big and how many hearts can I reach. I, I, I never thought a thing like that could happen to me. Uh, I never thought I could change. I could make a, a significant change of in so many young boys and girls' lives. And it was... You know, I walked in. I walked in a street uh, in Spain. I was doing a shooting, like maybe six months after that, and I I saw a Spanish like young girl, like she stumbled uh, upon me on the street, like really bumped into me, and she was looking. She was looking at me, and she was like in complete shock. She was like this chubby girl. And she immediately started crying and, 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 and saying stuff in Spanish that I didn't understand. And I, I, she was saying, and, and I was in tears. I didn't get a word of what she was saying. And I was, and that was the moment I realized that how much it resonated. Uh, and it was amazing. Netta, thank you so much for sharing your light with us. I actually, thank before you, you got on, I had mentioned your quote about the about how if you don't share light, you bring darkness. Uh, mm -hmm. And now, us being in your presence, wow, do we do we feel it even through the, the crazy world of Zoom? Um, and 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 I want to be able to uh, let you go back to regular life and Steve go back to regular life. Um, I'd love to hand it to I'd love um, if you have any sort of wrapping up words. Uh, I would love to give you the last word before going to Steve and to David to 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 properly to properly you know close out the the show. But is there anything you'd like any final message you'd love to leave the Hanichim with here? Ah, uh, first of all, thank you so much uh, for letting me do this and letting me talk to you. I I feel honored and privileged. Um, stay yourselves. Hang in there. Uh, this is one of the most interesting, darkest, uh, fascinating times that, that has ever happened. And, uh, and if you can find a way to, to beat the system, uh, and find happiness, uh, which is already there and enjoy the simple stuff, then you are winning. Uh, have a wonderful uh, Shabbat. <laughs> um, and I, you have a big hug for me. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a You're part also of this. pretty. <laughs> I just, before Netta goes off, I just want to thank you also, Netta, because when we're back in camp again next summer, as we started last summer, every Saturday night, and the kids know this, they are out dancing to toy. We've got a dance to tell you, and we've got 300 kids and 100 staff people, and it is a dramatic moment in camp. And we'll send you a video of 400 of, 400 of, our, uh, of our young Judeans that tell you who to dancing to your song. So thank you for the song, because it, it gets us really going on Saturday night, I tell you who to. Listen to my other songs too. They're too. They're good too. <laughs> oh, there's a great new song called Cuckoo, and you should. Oh, I love it Cuckoo, is. and I love um, Sababa Basa. Is that also? Is that also one of your? I Basa like Sababa. Basa, Basa That's Sababa. also mine. <laughs> Sorry, I was reading left to right instead of right to left. <laughs> that was a great Bye, song. kids. Uh, 
uh, Steve, thank you so much for inviting S Curve recording artist legend Netta to be a part of this. You know, doubling down on the inspiration <laughs> for everyone. Uh, do you have um, also final words for the Hani uh, uh How to how to live their lives and as with success and tikkun olam at the same time is not an easy thing. Oh, I don't I don't want to tell anyone how to live their life, uh, but. Yeah, I will say that we do. Are, we are living in remarkable times, and there are some times when you know uh, social action isn't a luxury; it's a necessity. And I think your generation, for better or worse, is in that situation where it, you have no choice but to go out there and try to fix this world that that needs a lot of fixing. And I just knowing a lot, you know, a lot, a lot of young people through my daughters. Um, I think that you guys have it in you to become the greatest generation ever. And I hope you fulfill that. Thank you for letting me talk to you. Oh, hey, Steve, 